know there's a couple of thermal sensors. I already removed the one from here. I'm going to remove the one now from over here. And I'm going to remove the one from wow, really? From over here. There we go. So all the thermal sensors are out of the, of the board. And I believe I have removed all the screws, so we're going to start to remove the board now from the system. Um, over here, you have some wires coming in from the left I.O. board. You're going to want to just slide those back towards you. That's going to free the board up, and you're going to lift it out. Okay, so non-standard Apple thermal compound. Usually it's white. It's all over the place, overdone, and clumpy. Um, this you can see is some arctic silver 5 or uh, silver compound um, these blue points are still on these two chips so Northbridge and processor have not been reworked before there is no glue holding down the GPU so GPU most likely VRAM has been reworked so that's where I'm going to put my focus when I go and do the repair and we'll see if that works. Alright, so we'll be back in a few minutes and um, I'll have the machine set up, turned on, and I'll go ahead and start the repair. Okay, so we're back. Um, I have the MacBook Pro Logic board on the hot plate. It's already preheated. Um, I have it set to 200. I also have the light is going to be on 250. Um, I'm going to put on all my equipment so I don't get splashed or have to breathe in any fumes. I know it's going to be difficult um, maybe to hear me, but I'll try to speak clearly anyway. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reflow the VRAM. Of course, I'm going to have my Kester no flea, clean, trusty, trusty flux. You're going to want to make sure you get it underneath the modules. This part of the reflow is going to be very fast because I only have to hit these about two times each. I may go four. It depends since the system has already been worked once. And I'm also going to go in a cross pattern to try to give it as much even heat as possible. There was two, so now I'm going to go across to this one. And the smoke you see coming off, if you can see it, is the tester, it's the flux burning off. Um, that's just going to help reconstitute the solder connections that are underneath the chip that may have cracked due to heating and cooling. Okay. Now I'm going to start the pattern over.
Okay, so now I'm just going to take this down very, very carefully um, and give it a second to cool off because what I'm going to do then after I let that cool for a minute is make sure that the solder will re-solidify so I can flip it. Then I'm going to rework and reseat the GPU and then once that's done, I will let it cool and then we'll reassemble and test. It doesn't take very long for this to re-solidify, but you do not want to turn it over until you get a good feel for when because you'll shift it one of the modules and once you do that you have to reball and reconnect and it's a real hassle so please take your time with this and do it once and do it right. Okay, I'm going to put back on all my equipment and then I'm going to just start working this chip. So I'm going to put more tester and then we're going to go ahead and start the job. And there we go. We have Kester completely coming out of all sides. So I know that that's ready. I'm going to go ahead and position the chip. And again, 250 is good. We're going to go ahead and start. I have the assembly down to its lowest spot. I'm going to do five in the middle. Then I'm going to move to the corners, do three in each corner, and then I'm going to work an S pattern. This seems to be the most successful way to receive these GPUs for me. It's just like anything else, you can try to do it and whatever works best for you and the client and gives longevity to the repair. So I'm about to complete my cross pattern and then I'll move on to the S pattern. Um, anybody who's watched my video on the BGA rework of the Radeon HD 5770 should be familiar with this. Um, it's pretty uniform and it's uh, the same way that I'll do every chip in the future.
just deviating from the pattern because I want to have a different start point. And now I'm going to go in a circular motion. Now we're going to go back to the middle. I'm going to raise it up. Just try to get a nice, even pull. Heat across the entire chip just to make sure that everything is nice and even right before I turn it off so all the solder joints have the same amount of heat. All right. So that was it. I've reseated the RAM and I've also reseated the um, GPU on this MacBook Pro Logic board. I'm going to go ahead and let it cool down and we're going to go ahead and test it and make sure that everything is working. Okay, so we're back. Um, I saved you guys the trouble of watching me reassemble this. Um, you saw pretty much how I took it apart, so you just do it in reverse. Um, some key things when you're going to test this, especially if you're not going to fully reassemble the board, is to make sure that you apply and clean and put a new thermal compound down. You want your fans to be clean and the vents on this heat sink. Also clean your heat sink. Um, you reconnect everything and you make sure that you get these thermal sensors have to be on otherwise your fans will spin at 100%. Um, if you put it together and the fans are spinning at 100% it probably means that one of these aren't seated properly. Um, you want to take it apart, clean the connections, reseat them. Um, and if it still is doing that, then you have two options. You may need to solder it directly to the board, or you may have damaged one of the thermal sensors during the reflow. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but there are times and occasion where it will happen. Um, and at that point, you'll need to explain that to the client and see how they feel about continuing with the repair. Okay, so everything's down. All the sensors are on. All the parts are back in. I'm going to go ahead and just attach the data cable. We're going to hit the power button, and we're going to see what she does. Okay, just make sure it's fully seated. Um, then you're going to want to sit it back down, turn it on. Ah, there we go, the beautiful boot chime sound, and we have video. Um, since I don't have the board screwed back down into the heat sink or anything, it's going to be a quick test. We're going to see if we can get to the desktop. Um, if so, you reassemble it. Then you run a couple of stress testing applications, make sure that it is good and that the repair is taken and it doesn't fail. If it does, you know, just rinse, wash, and repeat until the repair sticks. Um, and that's it. Uh, we're just going to wait for this to boot in so you can see. And then, okay, so now it's booting into the desktop. Okay, you're going to see some messages saying like, oh, I don't know what date and time it is because I, you know, basically was off for a while without the CMOS battery being connected. That's fine. Network list comes up. We have volume and we also have backlight. So I'm going to call this repair a success. And um, I just want to say thank you everybody for watching. I hope you found this informative. Um, and you know, if you like, please subscribe and I'll be looking forward to doing my next video. See y'all soon.